Inham, Wikipedia article audio. Inham also known as dactylolysis spontanea is a painful constriction of the base of the fifth toe frequently followed by bilateral spontaneous autoamputation a few years later. The groove begins on the lower and internal side of the base of the fifth toe, usually according to the plantar digital fold. The groove becomes gradually deeper and more circular. The rate of spread is variable, and the disease may progress to a full circle in a few months, or still be incomplete after years. In about 75 per center both feet are affected, though not usually to the same degree. There is no case reported where it begins in any other toe than the fifth, while there is occasionally a groove on the fourth or third toe. The distal part of the toe swells and appears like a small potato. The swelling is due to lymphatic edema distal to the constriction. After a time crusts can appear in the groove which can be infected with staphylococcus. While the groove becomes deeper, compression of tendons, vessels, and nerves occurs. Bone is absorbed by pressure, without any evidence of infection. After a certain time all structures distal the stricture are reduced to an avascular cord. The toe's connection to the foot becomes increasingly slender, and if it is not amputated, it spontaneously drops off without any bleeding. Normally it takes about five years for an auto-amputation to occur. Signs and Symptoms Cause Cole describes four stages of inham. Pain is present in about 78% of cases. Slight pain is present in the earliest stage of inham, caused by pressure on the underlying nerves. Fracture of the phalanx or chronic sepsis is accompanied with severe pain. The true cause of inham remains unclear. It is not due to infection by parasites, fungi, bacteria, or virus, and it is not related to injury. Walking barefoot in childhood had been linked to this disease, but inham also occurs in patients who have never gone barefoot. Race seems to be one of the most predisposing factors and it may have a genetic component, since it has been reported to occur within families. Dent ETAL discussed a genetically caused abnormality of the blood supply to the foot. It has been related to inadequate posterior tibial artery circulation and absence of plantar arch. Histology shows a change in the prickle cell layer, and this is responsible for the laying down of condensed keratin causing the groove. The junctional tissue is reduced to a slender fibrous thread almost avascular, and all the tissues beyond the constricting band is repressed by a fibrofatty mass covered by hyperkeratotic integument. Soft tissue constriction on the medial aspect of the fifth toe is the most frequently presented radiological sign in the early stages. Distal swelling of the toe is considered to be a feature of the disease. In grade 3 lesions osteolysis is seen in the region of the proximal interphalangeal joint with a characteristic tapering effect. Dispersal of the head of the proximal phalanx is frequently seen. Finally, after auto-amputation, the base of the proximal phalanx remains. Radiological examination allows early diagnosis and staging of inham. Early diagnosis is crucial to prevent amputation. Doppler shows decreased blood flow in posterior tibial artery. Diagnosis Inham is an acquired and progressive condition, and thus differs from congenital annular constrictions. Inham has been much confused with similar constrictions caused by other diseases such as leprosy, diabetic gangrene, syringomyelia, scleroderma, or Vowinkel syndrome. In this case, it is called pseudoinham, treatable with minor surgery or intralesional corticosteroids, as with inham. 
it has even been seen in psoriasis or it is acquired by the wrapping toes, penis, or nipple with hairs, threads or fibers. Oral retinoids, such as tretinoin, and antifibrotic agents like tronilast have been tested for pseudoinhum. Impending amputation in Vowinkel syndrome can sometimes be aborted by therapy with oral atretinate. It is rarely seen in the United States but often discussed in the international medical literature. Wearing shoes to protect barefoot trauma has shown decrease in incidence in inhum. Congenital pseudoinhum cannot be prevented and can lead to serious birth defects. Histolopathology Incisions across the groove turned out to be ineffective. Excision of the groove followed by Z-plasty could relieve pain and prevent auto-amputation in grade I and grade II lesions. Grade three lesions are treated with disarticulating the metatarsophalangeal joint. This also relieves pain, and all patients have a useful and stable foot. Intralesional injection of corticosteroids is also helpful. Inham predominantly affects black people, living in West Africa, South America, and India. In Nigeria it is a common disease with an incidence of 1.7 per thousand. In tropical and subtropical climates, its incidence has been reported as between 0.015% and 2.0% of the population. Up to now only a few cases had been reported in Europe. Inham usually affects people between 20 and 50 years. The average age is about 38. The youngest recorded patient was 7 years old. It is more common in men than in women, and is often familial. The first description of Inham in the West appears to have been provided by English surgeon Robert Clark who made a passing reference to dry gangrene of the little toe as a common occurrence in the Gold Coast in an 1860 report to the Epidemiological Society of London, but did not recognize it as a distinct entity and believed it to be a consequence of suppressed yaws. Inham was first recognized as a distinct disease and described as such in detail by Brazilian physician José Francisco de Silva Lima in 1867. The name Inham was used to refer to the disease by Yoruba speakers in Bahia, Brazil, where Silva Lima practiced. Imaging The first histological studies of Inham were conducted by O. E. H. Wucherer and published in 1872, and the first imaging studies were conducted in 1924. Differential Diagnosis Prevention Treatment Epidemiology History